everyone, welcome back. This is another rant video that rant video I've been meaning to do for a while now. For, for those of you who aren't aware, I'm a fan fiction writer. I like not not the greatest writer yet, although I like to think I'm improving. Um, but I haven't really started this fan fiction yet. But in the future, I'm going to be doing a fan fiction based on Metroid Prime Four because it does at this point it doesn't look like they're going to be making it. They might, but I don't know. And if they do, then it'll be for Metroid Prime 5, whatever. Um, which I hope, I'll hopefully be able to make into a machinima, eventually. I hope. I'm not saying this will happen, I hope. So this is my thought, a rant video, based on my thoughts on what I think Metroid Prime 4 should be like. My story will be called Metroid Prime 4 Salvation, in case you're wondering. And... Yeah, so in this video, I'm basically first going to, going to cover plot points that I want to have in it. Um, and also different little odds and ends. And then I'm going to discuss different power-ups I want it. Because obviously the main, per the main appeal of the Metroid Prime games gameplay is going around. And you, at the beginning of the games, you lose almost everything that you have. Um, and then you go throughout the game and you collect them and you get a lot more to compensate for them. That's basically what the games are about. I mean, there's other, I mean, there's other stuff thrown in there too, you know, like in the first game, the main goal is to defeat Metroid Prime. In the second game, the main goal is to defeat, to defeat the Ing, the Ing leader and Dark Samus. In the third game, it was to defeat Dark Samus who was to control of the Aurora unit. You know, but... The main appeal is going around to collecting items which will either help you get through the game, like they're not required but they're def they definitely help, or they're required. Alright, now first off, the plot. I think the plot should take place immediately after Metroid Prime 3, alright, and you have this new enemy. Alright, I haven't decided what I'll call him yet, so just to be, so just to be generic, let's just call him Vex. I'll, I may decide a different name in the future when I start writing the story. I haven't really decided yet. So let's just call him Vex. And let's say that he was the, the true Emperor Ing, okay? Or not the true Emperor Ing. He was the true leader of all the Ing, even above the Emperor Ing. But for some unknown reason, he wasn't there to help the Emperor Ing fight when it, you know, fight against Samus. Ignore that. That's just my dogs. Anyways, um, hopefully they'll stop soon. Anyways, and let's say he resurrects a lot of the, a lot of the previous enemies from the previous game. So let's say the, sh and for Metroid Prime 1, um, Ridley, let's say he's actually Robo Ridley this time. The only organic organs he has is the brain and the heart or something like that, you know, and the, the, uh, Mama Shegoth and the Omega Pirate and Flagra and Metroid Prime and the uh, Armored Beetle and uh, the, uh, what other enemies was, what other bosses was in the first game? I can't remember right now. Damn it. Well, there's six right there. And then for the second game, obviously, Dark Samus. Dark Samus has got to be in that fucking game. Dark Samus is a is is the fucking shit but dark samus um and obviously the temple guardian so you know the emperoring and the uh, chica larva and chica adult and the uh quadraxis and um, amorbis and also all the guardians so which would serve, would serve the same purpose in this game that they did in metroid Prime to echo so the uh Morph Ball Bomb Guardian, the Power Bomb Guardian, the Spider Ball Guardian, the Space Jump Boot Guardian, the Boost Ball Guardian, the Grapple Guardian. Um, uh, what else? I can't think of those right now, but you know, you have just all, all of that. I can't remember any of the special bosses in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, because I haven't played it in years, I never even beat it either. Um, but, yeah, stuff like that, and... Plus, obviously, Vex, as I'm calling you right here, too, would be a boss. So that'd be 19 bosses right there, and probably way more as well. 
in addition, you know, so that's basically the core right there, and that's all I'm going to explain about the plot because I haven't even really got it all, all completely organized myself, but that's the basics of the plot. All right, and of course they bring back the the whole dark world, light world aspect, you know, with dark aether, and each area that you visit would have its own version of the dark world and whatnot. And obviously, you know, yeah, dark world, light world, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, now that I'm through with that, let's talk about the power-ups. That's really what I wanted to want to get to mostly in this rant. Because, I, like I said before, the, in my opinion, they're the best part about the Metroid Prime series. Okay. And I actually have a list here on my computer. All right, let's start with the beam weapons. Obviously, we'd have the same... I, I'd like them to bring back the same, all the same beam weapons from the first two Prime games. So, the power beam, which is always the standard, but also the ice beam and the plasma beam and the fucking uh, wave beam as well. You know, and the light beam, dark beam, and nihilator beam. And there would also be m missile combos, the, the original missile combo. So you have a super missile and the a ni um. So, so, uh, supernova or sonic boom or whatever it's called for the annihilator beam and the dark burst the light burst and the um wave buster and the flamethrower and the ice spreader okay but also i think there should be two missile combos for each beam weapon there will be a unique one and then there will be a missile version of it for example, this power beam has a super missile, the and the wave beam would have the wave missile, and the plasma beam would have the plasma missile, and the uh, ice beam would have the ice missile. Which I believe they actually did have an ice missile um, in the third game. The only different, the only thing is the ice missile in the third game, once you got it, it was the standard, the standard, if I recall correctly, for, for all your missiles, okay? And whatnot, but yeah, ice missile, and dark missile, light missile, and annihilator missile. Okay, and the, the difference could be like, you press down, uh, like in order to uh, launch a missile combo, you would charge up the beam that you wanna launch the missile combo for, and then you would press the missile button, in order to launch it so maybe you could do that normally but if you want to launch the uh, the second one you could like press and hold or press two times in a row or something like that you know that's definitely an idea right there now um an oh another uh missile combo that or another beam weapon i thought would be a new one would be the phase on beam now i'm kind of cheating here <coughs> excuse me um just a sec i'm actually kind of cheating here because Technically, there was a phase on beam in the three games. In Metroid Prime One, once you got the phase on suit and you got and you started going deeper into the uh, impact crater, when you step in phase on and charge up your power beam, you can shoot a phase on blast. In Metroid Prime Two, when you're fighting Dark Samus at the very end of the game, Dark Samus emits phase on and shoots it out of her or him or it or whatever and you have to charge up your power beam and absorb it and fire it back at it, okay? Fire it back at her. And in the third game, it based, I, if I recall correctly, I think it had some sort of a visor that allows Samus to use a phase on beam. The only, diff, the only thing is, it wounds her. So what's the fucking point? In this game, I say, just cut the bullshit. You get a fucking phase on beam. Okay, and then of course two missile combos, obviously the phase on missile, and then you know some other creative missile combo for the phase on beam, like the phase on spreader or the phase on annihilator or something like that, which so they will basically spread phase on around the area a lot, you know. Uh, kind of hard for me to explain this, but some creative missile combo for the phase on beam. And then another idea that I had was the Echo Beam. 
because in the second game you had the echo visor but no echo beam so i say the echo beam all right which shoots particles of sound at your enemy and the way it hurts them is that it disrupts their ears so much that it actually causes them to go insane and if they try to uh, fight against it too much it'll actually blow their eardrums out you know i think that would be kind of cool and of course the two missile combos were the uh echo missile and the and some other creative missile combo for it like the like the echo ultra sound wave or something like that you know Now, another beam weapon I had in mind was the lava beam, which would be very simple. It just shoots lava out of, you know, Samus can shoot lava out of her arm cannon. Very simple concept, you know. Um, so, yeah. And, of course, there'd be the lava missile and also some creative missile combo for the lava beam. And also the acid missile, which would shoot acid out of her arm cannon. And the, of course, the at, or the acid beam, I mean, of course, the acid missile and some other creative uh, missile combo for the acid beam. Let's see if I have any other. All right. I also put here the destroyer beam, which would be like what you get at the, like, the very end of the game in order to fight the final boss. And it would combine the powers of every single beam weapon, missile combo, and your missiles that you have in the entire game. Alright. And that's the only thing that will hurt the final boss. And even then it will only hurt it just slightly. Then of course you could have like... Well, I could only think that you could just have the destroyer missile for... as the missile combo for it. That's just maybe just me, I don't know, but... That's, that's what I was thinking. Like, that would be the only thing I would be suitable for. But, you know, maybe I could think of some of a, set, a second one. I don't know. But yeah, that's all my plans for the, um, for the beam weapons and missile combos. And obviously, you'd have missiles in the game, too. That's kind of a giving by now, considering what I was talking about. Um, but, yeah. Now that we're done with that, let's go to... Okay, missile weapons. Got them done. Okay, morph ball weapons. I'm gonna just gonna cover the ones that are kind of a given. And the morph ball, the boost ball, the spider ball, the morph ball bomb, and the power bombs. Oh, that was easy. Okay. And the jump, and also the jump ball. Uh. Maybe the jump ball allows you to jump really high with the morph ball. And then the morph ball laser being kind of self-explanatory. And then the uh, bounce ball maybe allows you to bounce really quickly with it. Like maybe the jump ball only allows you to do really tall jumps, but the bounce ball allows you to bounce really quickly with the morph ball. And that, and that one right there could be like maybe required for certain puzzles in the game and whatnot. So yeah, there's a thought. And then moving right along here. The visors. Obviously, the two givens are the combat visor and the scan visor. Okay? Obviously. The two you get right off the bat. Period. Okay, but also I'd like them to bring back the thermal visor, the x-ray visor, the dark visor, and the echo visor. Alright? Because if you have an echo beam, you should have the echo visor as well. Excuse me. Um... Yeah, and what other... The uh, laser beam visor, which kind of common sense, just lets you a laser beam out. And the light visor. Um, which would, I guess, allow you to... 
see through it in incredibly bright areas because the dark visor allows you to see in incredibly dark areas. So I guess the light visor could let you see in incredibly light areas. Maybe the in some of the enemies will be able to make areas so light that they're really hard to see through. And then that's what the uh, light visor would be for. So to see, in so you can see in there. And the now the suit upgrades. Obviously, the combat suit is the one you would get off, off right after that. The various suit, it all depends. I mean, obviously, you'd, if if there's no areas in the game that requires the various suit, then they probably just give it to you right off the bat. Um, however, if there are, then they probably make you find it, like in the first game. But in the second game, they gave it to you right off the bat, and in the third game, because there was no areas that required it. it isn't, I believe so in the third game. I know for a fact in the second game. Um, and looking back up here again, the, okay, the phase on suit once again, so you can survive in phase on. I felt it was really fucking annoying in the second game that they didn't include the fucking phase on suit. Then the cold suit, maybe, as, maybe as the contrary to the various suit, which allows you to survive in really hot temperatures, the cold suit will allow you to survive in really cold temperatures colder than most people would be able to stand, obviously, you know. Uh, the gravity suit, which would allow you to maneuver in water better. <coughs> the dark suit and light suit, since I said in my story, uh, the dark world, light world aspect back, the dark suit and light suit would obviously have to be a must, once again. To have in the game, uh, the micro suit, which allows you to temporarily transform into micro Samus, and the giant suit, which allows you to temporarily transform into giant Samus. Okay, that's it for the suit upgrades, I believe. Yes. Now for the uh, boot upgrades. Obviously, the com combat boots would be. The regular boots you get automatically. The super jump boots will allow you to jump really high up in the air. The gravity boots will allow you. But well, well, the gravity boots will allow you to levitate slowly up in the air, then you'd fall back down. The uh. The uh, hover boots would allow you to hover slightly in the air, and the space jump boots would allow you to, you know, get a double jump just like they always have. And then there's the grapple upgrades. There's the grapple beam, the grapple beam whip, or, or um, which allows you to maybe allow you to open up doors or something, maybe there's some doors that requires it, and the gravel beam lasso, which you can maybe use as a weapon. Okay. And then the last section here for the uh, items is miscellaneous. Maybe there's like a, well obviously I really want the screw attack to be in the game. Um, although in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes it was rather annoying to actually learn how to use, but once you learn how to use it, I thought it would, personally it was actually really fucking fun to use. And a sword, too, maybe you can use for some combat moves in first-person mode. And once you acquire the sword, you, Samus will actually automatically attach it to her screw attack, which would do a few things. It would make the range of her screw attack wider. She'd be able to play, plow through stronger enemies than she, she did before. And she'd be able to screw attack for longer distances than before. So that'd be really, really cool. Um, see here... Robo wings, which would allow Samus to fly with wings and give her much better strafing abilities, and the uh, oh man, and the super magnet, which would allow Samus to force uh, metal 